Hello YouTube, it's Keith Kevin King. Guess what? Yeah, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do another pocket dump deconstruction. It's Wednesday, July 13th, 2016. What you see in front of me, I went through my cases, threw these knives on my desk, made them look pretty, took pictures with my iPhone of them. I'm gonna post those pictures on Instagram at Keith Kevin Ken later on this noon, uh, later on this noon. Later on around lunchtime when I get out of the office. But this right here, this pocket dump deconstruction that we're about ready to do, that'll go up 15 minutes after I'm done with this. So it'll go up this morning. So you can enjoy that and then see what the picture look like. You know what the picture look like? That right there. <laughs> it's true. I turned my iPhone 6S Plus from photo, from taking that picture to video, and now we're gonna do this deconstruction. It is Wednesday, July 13th, 2016, as I record this. Yep, it's hump day. I know, believe me, I know. The majority of you are not following every single day, but I do that just to let everyone know that we do this every single day. That's right, Sunday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday, however you count it. <laughs> my birthday is coming up later this month. We're going to do it on my birthday. We do it on holidays. We do it all the time, every single day. And the reason is you gave you guys give me a lot of great encouragement. I really appreciate that. So encourage me with the thumbs up if you enjoy the video. Now let's talk about the deconstruction. Yeah, I'm still on my... Um, <laughs> on my comfort food carry. No, I'm not carrying food, but I am definitely carrying stuff that makes me happy all through this week. Um, this is my Mont Blanc uh, watch. It's a chronograph. People sometimes ask me for more specifics. That's all I got for you. <laughs> Seriously, I bought it. You guys know when, when I used to travel and do consulting about 20 years ago at at this upscale mall in Atlanta and you know the Mont Blanc little mini stores I don't know if they still have them and it actually doesn't have a name on it but it's really a nice one I love it um the <laughs> the uh I'll tell you why I'm laughing in just a few moments the cigar can't wait to smoke my Partagas Siri D number four ah man what a wonderful cigar you know yesterday <laughs> i'm laughing because my thumbs hurt because <laughs> yesterday i was smoking a cigar and watching youtube and you know youtube sometimes you can fall down this deep deep hole do you guys do that you go from one video to the next one that leads you to a next one that leads you to the next one then all of a sudden i'm watching videos about rving around the country and all of that stuff and so now I'm thinking, man, I own my car. Maybe I can trade that in for an RV and go traveling and go to all the knife stores around the country and stop off at the cigar stores and record it and then go to great restaurants and do yada, yada, bada, yada, yada, right? And so then all of a sudden I did the unthinkable. I'll tell you about the unthinkable in just a few moments. As a collector, it's the unthinkable. My uncle told me about this years ago he said the one don't when you collect and i collect a lot of stuff and i did it yesterday and now i understand why and it leads to my sore thumb but let's get through some of this <laughs> that's called a cliffhanger i guess um this is a shown pen you guys know i love it this is the stainless steel this stainless steel has dlc the diamond like carbon uh on it a lot of great watches a lot of nice watches have that uh you guys know i love the shown s-c-h-o-n design d-s-g-n pins um again not sponsored at all but i really like them uh you guys should check them out i i know there's a lot of pins i don't collect pins and for i don't know how many years i carried a pin that just had the name of my business on it I don't do that anymore after I bought one of these. I really like them. Now I have three of them. I really like it. Anyway, simple, hefty. I like it. Made in the USA. But as you guys know, following me and my knives, 
Yeah, I, I like good things that aren't made in the USA too sometimes. Um, Mont Blanc wallet, one of the skinny finny uh, wallets, and I'm doing some blended scotch, the red kind. The coin today, yeah, it's one of my uh, Chinese flower silver coins, uh, lunar coin. It's the year of the horsey. <laughs> it's from, uh, what, 2000, let me see. Yeah, there we go, 2002. I always carry a lucky one ounce silver coin because my grandfather did. I always carried a pure silver dollar, U.S. silver dollar, a lot of you don't remember that. I barely remember it myself and always stopped off and used it in the corner store. Um, and man, it made an impression on me. And now I'm a grandfather of five sons and I still talk about my grandfather and I still have a coin in my pocket because of that. Isn't that something? Even on bad days, I come in, I take the coin out of my pocket and I go, whew, it could have been even a worse day. <laughs> Here's an old coach a notepad, a leather notepad that I have. So why are my thumbs hurting? And what rule did I break? Well, I was watching all that. And then, of course, ah, I flipped open <laughs> my, uh, my cases of knives, my Pelican cases. And I said, you know, why don't I do a quick calculation? Just go through all the slots and pull out without thinking the knives that I will keep no matter what. So I go through all my knives. I go through all the Chris Reeve. I go through first the case that I showed you guys. It's, it's listed if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen it where I go through my Pelican 1550. So I go through that um, with all the Chris Reeve knives and stuff. I'm pulling them out. You know, the ones I want, all the Menundis. I go through my... You know, the couple of uh, microtechs I can't do without all this. I'm doing this because I'm seeing if I sold off my collection, how much would I make? And could I then buy that van or the three vans, the RV vans with the stoves and everything? Uh, and I said, oh, I'll do it quickly. You should never do that. I was up all night. Of course, you take them out, then you start flipping them. And then you start playing with them. And then all of a sudden you go, oh my God, I spent that much on knives? Don't ever do that. <laughs> Don't ever do that. So now I'm rethinking collecting. No, I'm not. I'm gonna continue to collect. I'm not getting rid of my knives. The rabbit hole was real. Uh, and of course, I thought it. I did it for 30 minutes. It ended up I was doing it for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> and flipped every one. So yeah, these old fat Michelin man hands are tight. <sighs> and you should never think about your collection in money terms. Never. Anyway, I did for a moment. Now I'm trying to forget it. And you know what? Can't forget it. Uh, <laughs> here's the roadie. Sorry for that sidetrack. Here's the roadie. Uh, that is my, the Spydeco roadie is my uh, keychain knife. Some people ask, why three knives? Aren't your pockets full? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. They're full and I love it. Again, comes from my grandfather. Big pockets and a lot of stuff. I could have swore he pulled out a shotgun one day out of his front pocket. He didn't. <laughs> you know how kids, you think that, right? <laughs> Everything's in the pocket. He didn't. Uh, but I, I just love it. And uh, now that, I, you know, after becoming single, and everything years ago, I was like, I'm just going to do stuff to make me happy. This roadie today is going to make me happy. This is the knife. The FAA at one time decided that they would allow knives back on airplanes after 9-11. And so Spyderco and a number of knife makers looked at what kind of regulations they would have, spe uh, specifications for the knives that could be carried. They couldn't lock. They needed to be small. They needed not, you know, they needed to be opened with two hands. Spyderco came up with this, the roadie. And then FAA said, nah, we changed our mind. And Spyderco said, you know, there's a market for these kind of knives. And there is because, of course, in a lot of places, some of them in the U.S. where you need a smaller knife, 
they're available. Overseas from the U.S., it meets a lot of things. Two-hand opening, small knife, non-locking, slip joint knife. And so they manufactured it, and I love it. Five different colors, gray, black, blue, red, orange. The uh, steel on this blade, by the way, the blade is just 2.1 inches. It's nice, even in a little blade like this. It's perfect for keychain, perfect to just throw in your pants pocket or in your purse because this is FRN, that fiberglass reinforced nylon. This just feels like super plastic. Uh, I love it because this little knife and these big hands, it gives you that choil. Man, Spyderco's great with choils, especially on their slip joints. So that's protection right there, right? The uh, hole is just for branding. It's not functional. You need two hands. You notice how I always stop here? Most modern slip joints, not just Spyderco's, a lot of modern slip joints add that half stop. It doesn't lock you at half stop, but it pauses you there. It says, get those fat fingers out of the way, Kevin. I'm about ready to come down. Or it stops a little there as well. It just gives you a little bit more time. They put jimping on it in the back, jimping in the choil. Oh, the steel is that N690 steel. You ask Kevin, why is the shape so phony? Well, a lot of Spyderco knives have that little hump for that spidey hole, right? For the one hand opening. In this case, they have a hump on the head of that blade because instead of a nail nick, they came up with two divots right there. It's right hand, left hand, carry. No clip, it's a small, light knife. You don't need a clip, just throw it in your pocket. Pinch there, open. It's a real nice knife. I really like it. Perfect, perfect for the use I have as a uh, keychain knife because you have all the different colors depending on your mood. Yeah, it's a gray mood, I guess, but a fun gray mood because the medium knife, along with the larger knife, is another, yeah, it's another Chris Reeve carry. This is the small Chris Reeve Sabenza 21 and I really like it because this 21, not only does it have the latter Damascus blade, you guys know the blade is just under three inches at 2.9 inches, makes it legal in a lot of places in the US. Um, but also what they did was they had this shiny titanium that I always make messy with my dirty hands um, and etched in that Damascus blade. You see that? Shapes of the Damascus blade. In this case, I have the ladder Damascus and on the scales, it's ladder Damascus etched in on the show side with shiny titanium. And then on the back side, it's just that pure titanium. You guys know how that turns me on. And yes, I'm sick. I'm so sick, I stayed up five hours playing with a bunch of knives only because I was thinking about an RV. <laughs> I'm wacko. Please tell me you're wacko like that too. Anyway, this is a beautiful knife. It's not only beautiful, it's functional. I just love it. I just love it. For these humid days, I'm on the east coast of the U.S., humid days, always threatening thunderstorms. <laughs> it kind of represents that, doesn't it? It kind of feels like that. Nice and shiny and deadly and everything else. I love that knife. And of course, I had to bring the same knife. I had to buy it and now I'm bringing it. Yeah, this is my matchy, matchy, matchy week. It's the Chris Reeve Sabenza 25. Same pattern, of course, 3.6 inches on this ladder Damascus blade with the ladder Damascus etched in to that shiny titanium on the show side. Oh. 
I get paid on Friday. I don't know when you guys get paid. I get paid every two Fridays. So, of course, while I'm thinking about vans, you know what else I'm thinking about as I'm taking out all these knives? You would think when you're doing that going, these are the knives I'm going to keep no matter what. The other ones, I don't know. When I want the van, I'm going to sell them. You would think that would be going through a crazy sane fanatic's mind. I'm a crazy, crazy knife fanatic. I start thinking about the knives I don't have that I need to buy. <laughs> I don't get it either, you guys. I don't get it. But anyway, um, can't wait for the large and cozy. I have to get it. It still just looks like <laughs> a Sabenza 25. I know there's some internal, a few internal changes and in the clips position is, is a little changed. But I'm going to get it anyway. I, I like the small and cozy and I know I like the large one too. And a couple of other knives. There you go though. This is the large, large. <laughs> this isn't an Nkosi, Kevin. This is the Chris Reeves Abenza 25 with the latter Damascus, both on the show side scales and on the blade. Matchy, matchy. That's my carry. Oh, man, I feel good. I feel good putting all this on my desk. And I'm going to feel good. They're going to take me through hump day, Wednesday. I hope you guys, your hump day is an ant hill and not a mountain, all right? But I will see you on the other side, I promise you, tomorrow with another deconstruction. That is what I took a picture of. That's what you'll see on my Instagram at KeithKevinKen at noon. But this ain't Instagram, and this is the knife that got away. I almost thought, usually I mix and match a lot of makers' knives, but man, I've been sticking with Matchy Matchy and Chris Reeves lately. I just wanted to. This, though, is a wonderful knife. The Spyderco Bowie, man, it's nice. It really is. 3.4 inch blade, CTS XHP steel. It has that American Bowie shape. That's why the hole doesn't loop up as much. Loops up a little. It's a little bit more than the the traditional Bowie knife, but it's really nice. It's smooth. You know why it's so nice and why I love it? Because one of my favorite knives, one of the first knives that came out of the case was the Techno. The little Techno, this knife, well, this Techno was made by this same maker. Can you see the how familiar it is? Love the titanium. I love how it hides marks. I love this particle used a wire clip. Usually on their heavier knives, they don't, and they did here. Man, this is on, the techno is on a lot of people's top tens. I'm gonna tell you something, this Bowie has made it into my top uh, knives. It is just a bigger, yes, that's a Bowie shaped knife. I get it, this is a different shaped knife. I get it. It's fatter stock. It's still the same stock, CTS, XHP, but I just, the beauty of it, you know? It's just, a, it's America, it's hard work. I'm from Youngstown, Ohio, Northeast Ohio. Yeah, I'm a Cavs fan. Yes, I cried. I'm also a Cleveland Browns fan, which means I cry every single year for the other reasons. <laughs> but it's a hard working place used to be a big steel city and I'll tell you this is it reminds me of home this is this is a Youngstown knife you know that it's just hard working and uh, man I just I think of it all the <laughs> look at me man as you get older <sighs> man I just love it anyway uh, where the techno has that wonderful blue G10 backspacer this has a wonderful black thinner uh, not as rough. Um, the gouges aren't as rough. I love it. It almost, yes, part of it is my camera work, but man, it kind of disappears, but it's nice. You can feel it. This is a perfect knife. It's just a perfect knife. I'll tell you, I love this. This is the Spyderco Bowie. It took me a while not to lay this down. And by the way, this was on top of my table as one of the knives, these pair of knives that I won't part with. They're not super expensive, but man, they're excellent. That's the Bowie. 
from Spydeco, made by the same uh, person who made the Techno. Man, what a wonderful pair. Man, oh man, oh man. I'll tell you, those two in your pocket, you can do anything. It's almost like having a, you know, a, a small Sabenza and a large Sabenza, any one, 21 or 25, or I guess even the Encosa, and you feel like you could take on the world. Those two are enough. This is enough. It really is. I love all the other knives too, but man, just a perfect carry. But I didn't carry it. I'm going with this one instead. Hey, you guys, thanks a lot. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you get a chance. It's at Keith Kevin Ken. Hey, I read your comments. I'm not pushing. You notice I didn't push Instagram that much. <laughs> You're right. I, 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 pit, I push that too much. Um, and really, I use it as a clutch. That's why when I don't know what the, when I'm thinking about the next thing to do, I do these promotion things. I'll stop that um, because you guys don't know I'm using it as a crutch. Also, please thumb this up. Here's This is definitely a crutch, but also I love the love you guys are showing me with just hitting that thumb. It just keeps me going. If you've ever had to do something every single day, Work is one thing you get paid for. Obviously, I don't get paid for this, but it's something I enjoy. But some days you don't want to do it, and then I see all those thumbs up. I'm going to do it every day. And then when I do it, I enjoy it. So thank you for the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel or you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please do that. Remember I told you about throwing all the knives out of the cases? <laughs> well, once we get a 1,000, um, I called them members, didn't I? Once we get a 1,000 people who um, want to join us, um, what we'll do is we will, I will open up my entire Spydeco collection. It's about 400 knives. I always say about because my uncle said don't count your collecting things either. <laughs> of course, I broke the rule yesterday. Might as well start counting and, and break that rule as well. Anyway, that's what we'll do. We'll go through all the Spydecos. Hey, you guys, thank you very much for watching. You guys have a perfect, perfect day. Keep your pockets full. Try your best to have some fun. Goodbye.